to the devil is a handsome man. All right, we're gonna start off like any other reading, whatever. whatever. Uh, this is actually a pretty tame story. I actually think the colors and everything get a lot better as we get through uh, the first arc. I think the first arc as we go through is very cutesy, uh, very wholesome, surprisingly. Uh, shit starts getting weird, and I think. Uh, if we continue this series as a quick read of The Devil is a Handsome Man, uh, you'll see because the creator has been gone for about one, two years at this point, three. I've actually contacted them before. And I tried to contact them again uh, when I lost my uh, Twitter account and all that other jazz. And I was like, oh, can I draw your character? You know, I still wanted to link them because I think they're really cool. Here's the thing. Trying to link somebody who's been missing for years at this point, basically, because COVID hit and everyone just fucking either was on the internet or phased off the earth. That's not important. Uh, no, he's just like, hey, yo, we about to do the D, which is pretty base. Uh, he's like, I, I can get into the office a little late, which I actually like this. Some webtoons actually do this, and I and I wish this more webtoons did this. Uh, and that's having the goddamn, look at this, it animates. More webtoons should be doing this. Not a lot, but giving your webtoon a little more personality can never hurt. Uh, and I think that's a really nice touch. Stuff like the phone ringing, I wish was animated. I think just the top part with the devil sign, I think adds so much more. If I were to edit this and take and not and cut out all the audio, I would probably have sit not sit on that still for a few seconds just to put the uh, the flickering light to show how much like no, this is important. It shows off the uh, this isn't just some regular thing. This is the devil is a handsome man. That, that's the iconic little light flicker that makes it feel so much more. Than it actually is and I feel like if I were to put it at right underneath that would actually make it feel a little better but I also think it works well to have the beginning part of two people just fucking around and then you're like oh this feels unsettling and it's like no 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 damn it I'm late for it oh come on you know it, I understand that I think a lot of people who are on their first job always think they oh I can be a little late and they realize they're too late that's like a whole thing and I like how her skin is like actually puffing and smoking uh, like it's actually charcoal. That's not even like a joke. Uh, I think it's really nice how the percent the <laughs> she's oh no, it's this what smoking hot means? But the receptionist is like, yeah, yo, please hold. My interviews were scheduled for the interviews haven't even started. You fucking dumbass, sign on the clipboard and have a seat. I like how she's fucking burning up so much that she set off sucking smoke alarms. Like goddamn, kind of be. Wait, I forget. Was that her at the top? Because I can always just go back. Because that doesn't that doesn't matter. Right but I think it's just a nice detail of how she's smoking hot. Even though, even if that was her, even if that's not her, I think the concept of being late for work is something a lot of people actually do have happen. And I think that's a nice touch. Uh, around here, things like this happen all the time. Oh, yep, you know, this, you know, people say, say something you say, fuck, no, let's just, <laughs> no, that's so dumb, that's a dick move. It's like, nah, we say that make you feel not bad. I'm gonna sit down now. I like how, and I'm gonna say this, I actually wish some of these characters played more important roles because I feel like the concept of getting into your job because we're going to learn later uh, about her identity and it kind of makes everyone else getting their job kind of feel even worse by comparison because someone else has this special privilege they don't know of but still I like these character designs I think they're really cute look at the one in the middle look at those little horns that's so fucking cute I, I like her the best I'm sorry unironically would draw her please uh bow question mark yes sir i'll grab the line not necessary just send her in are you telling i just did all this paperwork for nothing bow man man really said she here like i know like this was set up that you probably didn't notice uh in the first when you go through this the series because you go oh this starts making sense because she just gets in well if you need anything else please don't hesitate to ask actually you can go tell the rest of the trash go home kind of a douchebag I like how it's on speaker too, I think is the case. That they just get they just all came here and just be told, No, you're fucking garbage. Get out of here. She's even she's just like, why? And I can't lie. It's kind of a dick move. Even if you're the boss. Man says, Hi, come in, get the fuck out. Wastes everyone's time. Like what? Dick move, but agreeable. Uh and she's like, ahem, proceed through the door, which she does. And I gotta respect it for having the thinker, because that's the concept of... A lot of people talk about one of the greatest concepts of sin, anything related to the devil, is the concept of thought itself. 
I think that's a nice touch. A lot of people don't talk about is thinking is something that creates hesitation, that creates doubt, which can, and a lot of people, when they talk about you know, religion, like, oh, you'll doubt the Lord if you think too much about him, you know, because he does all these trials and whatnot. And I think that's a nice touch. The thinker is the concept that most people don't even think about as negative. They go, oh, this is just the thinker because it's a famous art piece. And I think a lot, and I think about this because a lot of people, you know, when you think about something more than you should, you're like, oh, it checks out. Uh, but as we go down, this big ass door, but that's not a burden. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. It's just going down this hall. Uh, it's nice to meet you, miss. Zolia, which I think is a pretty nice name. Zolia uh, is very good. Would you like a drink? Which never, never, ever, if your boss ever offers you a drink, always decline. Uh, just to be polite. Like, I get it. Some people want to be very fancy, you know, very show off their more energetic personality. I think, because there are people who are light drinkers, so you want to be careful on that. Uh, because your boss could also be a light drinker. You want to make sure there's no dumb nonsense. Because you, some people get drunk very easily, even if they have a high tolerance sometimes. Uh, that's not important. Uh, but nice to meet you. Know, I, I, I know, no thank you. I, I don't want to drink on work days, which that's very fair because it is a work day. Which is crazy. That'll change. Oh, that sounds so... F I get their demons, but still, having work etiquette, you know, you know, being a boss, you never ever want to fuck your, co your workers. Because there's a power imbalance. If it was like, oh, you and this person were co-workers, like, that's bad. But at least there's no power imbalance unless they are on, like, a higher promotion chain. Because then that can actually become a power imbalance. Um, don't worry. Don't worry about cheating. Oh, you like to read the country or just sign like or like most people just sign. I was just starting when I applied. And, and what are you so prepared to sign your life away for? Don't mind telling you. Knowledge, no, information. That's all. I can offer you many things. Sounds horny. I like how one of the books says Blood Meridian. Fucking uh pure pure scroll wait, I thought I said pure scroll was gonna shit myself. Uh it Inferno uh Park Lincoln Park. I swear to yeah. There's actually a few. Uh, you're not looking in the looks department. You're not lacking in the looks department. I got a lot of requests of, for fame or fortune. How about eternal life? Information. You know, I think that's a nice touch because we we do get some information as we go, but that wasn't entirely everything. I do like how he's like eternal life, baby, and I'm like, how about no? I don't want eternal life. Kind of does sound boring when you ask anyone. I think the concept of living forever. In itself is interesting, but it feels awful to know that you will outlive a majority of people. Like, are we talking about? There's two types of eternal life and eternal youth. You know, there's eternal life where you stay at the age you you become eternal and you never age, meaning you can be forever 21. Eternal youth means you will never age at any point as a person. That the concept of age does not exist, but there's eternal life where. Your growth is stunted, but you everything is. It's not a situation of you can't get older, and you die, and you and you can and you die like a regular. That you can still die like normal means. You just don't die, and you stay young. And then as you turn to like, oh, you become old, but you you can't die. The one's better than the other because eternal youth by itself is sounds bad, but at least you can die, which. You just don't get older. You just stay at the age you are. Meaning, if you were in your 20s, uh, you would always be in your prime. Uh, I feel like that's such a nice touch that I would rather be in, like, 20s. Like, maybe even, because even like, there are... Being in your 30s sounds fine. Like, oh, you've peaked, but you're not at... You're, you've peaked, but you're not at, like, the... You're not too young. You're, you're right the you're right amount of old where people respect you. Because being in your 30s is not as bad as being in your 20s. Being in your 20s probably sounds awful. Uh, and I'm in my twenty two, my twenty twos, and I can tell you, it's not the end of the world. It's just you don't feel young anymore, but you, but you still feel young because there are people still like older than you by a, a majority. Is and that's all they need to know. Uh, knowledge. And he's like interesting. I actually like the detail of the devil has no face, and it's because you give him a face, and that's a concept. A lot of stories do try to tell when they go oh this is the this is the big baddest bad person in the world but he doesn't really have a face or perspective you can really look at he's a blank slate he's a hole that you fill as a void and i'm not trying to 100 uh, percent project but i think that's how a lot of stories uh, try to portray the devil as he is nothing but a face that you only can prescribe 
want to by yourself because there is no actual concept of what a devil is. A devil is someone who could be anything. You could be a saint and still be an awful, awful person. There are people who do amazingly good things, but they'll do something incredibly awful with those things in the process that you would never know. And people are shocked by these because you could just, there's some bad mojo that, that'd be going on. God, and he's like, interesting. They say, curiosity kills the cat, but where's the fun in that, right? Regardless, I suppose, we have a deal then. The devil came. <clears throat> and I think this is a really nice touch is, it, it's just, no, she came for knowledge, and he has the knowledge. He's of infinite void, which is also another touch. But the devil came, dressed in all black, holding a white hand. Now, I like this, you know, they shake hands, because that's how you, that's how devils in the concept of a lot of uh, storytelling are like, oh, you sign a hand, it's a deal between skin, skinship is considered the ultimate form of trust, meaning you're putting all your trust into somebody who can betray you, because the concept of the devil is, or any devil in general, is they can betray you, their hand is a false hand, that is a pretense, meaning if they really want to, they can take away their trust, while you put all yours into them. And I think it's really nice. Can you start off tomorrow? Of course. And I'll be seeing you in the morning. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Bright and early. I will be. I think it's a nice touch. Uh, Bo, Bo, send a warm reject rejection email to the to the rest of the applicants. Uh, <laughs> so me enter here. Uh, warmest regards. And she's like, fucking asshole. And I like the hand. I like the void. It's a hand reaching out from the void. Meaning it can't be fully trusted. Also, hello, this angle I've drawn. I've asked to color their uh, art before. Uh, and I think it's really good. I've colored their art before. I think it's very fun to color. Uh, they have not been on the internet. I'll fucking tell you this. Gone. Gone since, like, COVID started hitting bad. Uh, I hope they're not dead, because I've, I've talked to them before. Uh, and that's kind of it. Yeah, storyboard by, by uh, John Paul, Paul June. That's storyboards and edits. Oh, storyboard advice and edits by John Paul June. Good for you, Paul June. Uh, and this is Hello, This Angle. If they ever return to the internet, I would like to color more of the characters. I'm going to color more of theirs, by the way. I'll probably use them for thumbnails in the future. Uh, probably just use the basic stuff. But I do want to say uh, thank you for coming to this uh, casual reading of The Devil is a, hand, ha of, of the, is a Handsome Man. Uh, that is what we've come for. I, I people sleep gamers. We reached the fucking end. I'm very, very, very gamer people, people cool.